Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on uh, rendering motion blur in Cycles 4D on the OVDB Mesher. It's not as straightforward as you may think, so let's go ahead and get in there and I'll show you how to do it. So this is what we're going to make here. Um, it's just uh, an object going through some liquid and uh, there's some motion blur on the fluid. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D S22, and let's build this scene here real quick. So uh, we do Shift C, and that brings up our commander, and let's drop in a sphere and an FFD deformer. We'll put that uh, FFD under our sphere and do fit to parent, and then let's change our uh, type to icosahedron, and let's add 48 segments. And in our FFD deformer, Let's uh, select it and pull out one point to about there. And then we can change our uh, selection to rectangle. And let's scale up the back points and scoot them in. And then select all these middle points and shrink those in. And we have our bullet. So we'll do uh, right click current state to object and we're going to just going to delete that one we don't we don't need that now all right there's our bullet looking good uh, let's scale this bullet down to about 30 percent of its original size if you hold shift it'll jump by uh, five percent increments so that's what we want about that size is good shift c bring up a xp system and let's turn off the icon and let's go into our emitter. Um, we want a hexagonal emission. Um, that's gonna keep the particles from intersecting in the beginning, and that's good for uh, uh, fluid simulations. Let's turn off emit on all frames, and we only want one frame with zero speed and about 1.5 radius. Okay, and we want our uh, emitter to be a box we want it to be about that about that big all right let's add some more frames and let's turn off our emitter uh, our emitter and hit uh, space bar and it'll bring you back to your last used tool now let's rewind or reverse this um, I guess maybe about 600 centimeters is good and we'll go through and we can just apply and put another keyframe there. Now we have our bullet going through. And at the end, let's put in some rotation, about, about 1080 rotation will be good. And that'll spin the bullet. Um, and yeah, that'll, that'll be good. So let's add a XP collider tag to our bullet and we don't want a lot of bounce uh, but we do want a lot of friction with some variation uh, now let's play it and see how it looks okay so it's not looking very fluidy so let's add a fluid effects solver in here and uh, we can drag this into our uh, dynamics folder. And we're just gonna leave everything on default and try it again. Okay. Yeah, a lot more fluidy. Um, the particles are looking pretty sparse. So in X particles four, there is the sheeter object which is really nice. It's gonna fill in all these holes here. Um, so we basically just wanna increase the max density for us. Uh, uh, Insidium has uh, really good tutorials on the sheeter and all fluids. Um, so for more detail, check them out. All right, now we have a lot more. Yeah, we got some shooting out the back there. That's, that's looking nice. Um, All right, great. So this is the particle simulation. Uh, now we need to mesh this. So let's um, 
Well, first let's let's just cache real quick. So we will build the cache to external and our voxel uh, editor should be about 1.5. Uh, sorry, let's make the point radius about two. That'll fill it in a little bit more because we're gonna use some filters. So we'll just use the default median filter and then we will bring in a capital letter smoothing and drag that into our OBDB mesher. And we'll just knock it down to just half and we can turn off our particles. Now to get motion blur to work in this scene, uh, we're gonna start um, using cycles here. So we'll switch over to uh, our cycles layout and uh, let's make some materials. So we will do a, a glossy for our bullet and we will do a uh, surface principled uh, shader for our liquid and our liquid we can just make uh, whatever color you want just maybe blue and our bullet um, let's make it uh, a little bit rough and kind of like a you know like a bullety color something like that Okay, now we need an environment. Let's pause our real-time preview. And uh, in our environment, you can just basically go down and, and uh, turn on H, you know, click on the HDR and load yours in there, or you can use HDRI link, 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 which is a Grayscale Gorilla plugin. Highly recommend it here. Um, just really is a visually nice way to go through your HDRIs. So you just click on your in your node here, your environment, and you grab your texture and you drag it onto HDRI link, and that's uh, connected now. And you launch the browser, and then we have all these HDRIs. So we can do show all, and you buy the packs and you load them in, and there they all there they all are. Uh, so let's just grab one real quick here. Uh, the metal ones are really nice. Um, let's just grab under the theater. Okay. And now let's bring this down again. Now let's play it. And we can click on our environment and turn off our, um, in the object, we can turn off the ray visibility to our camera and then we won't be seeing that. Okay, motion blur, here we go. So we have to assign, let's pause our real-time preview. We have to assign cycles to be our renderer. So click on that, go into it, and at the bottom, we have motion blur. Turn that on, just leave everything else as default for right now. Uh, we need a camera and our camera needs to also have motion blur and we need to be looking through our camera. Make sure that you have under render in your real-time preview, you have motion blur selected or else you're not gonna see it. And then in our mesher, so right now the motion blur would work on the bullet but not the mesher, the mesher would just disappear. In fact, let's, let's demonstrate. Okay, so our mesher disappeared but we do see some blur happening on our bullet. Um, so the, the last kind of step here is in our OVDB mesher, we have to go into our tags and turn on transfer velocity. Now we have these uh, vertex tags here. Um, so we are gonna use those in our cycles object tag. Yeah, under motion blur, enable motion blur and then use velocity data. Now this is where we drag in our velocity tags and then we're just going to re-sim this. Uh, it's cached, so we can just scrub through. And let's play it. Okay, and there we have Cycles 4D rendering motion blur on the OVDB mesher.
All right, guys, that's about it. Hope you found it useful. Uh, you can leave a like if you did, and you can subscribe. I'm going to be doing some more tutorials in the next uh, couple days, weeks, and months. Uh, until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.